We got it. I'm going to let some people get on here. We were having a little trouble uh, getting it going, and I figured it out, so we should be good going forward now. Say hello in the chat if you're here. You can hear me? All right, thanks, Philip. Just letting some people on Facebook know. We'll, we'll get a bunch of people on here. I do apologize for the delay. I don't think we'll have that anymore, and I'll I'll schedule it for six o'clock going forward. But uh, oddly enough, I have a Mac computer, and I was talking to my buddy Scott on the phone, and we were trying to figure out it would not go live. And I'm like, why won't it go? And finally, occurred to me. I'm like, well, maybe it's the the Safari web because I know some of those things can be funky on Safari. So. Looks like we're getting quite a few people on here. I'll give it another 30, 30, 45 seconds, and then we'll get going. But how's everybody doing today? And did you guys get out fishing over the weekend a little bit? Yeah, Tom, nice to see you. I saw you at the tournament this weekend. How'd you end up? <laughs> Pat, Patrick, I agree with you. We do need to do some fishing on a on a red weld craft i would agree with that there goes my daughter who knows she's going to paint the town or something all right john you're coming to sheboygan are you coming fishing with us thomas we took second i actually just posted the video on on youtube if you haven't watched it yet i just posted uh um the video of the real steel challenge, which was the tournament that I fished on the rocks and reels last weekend. Uh, also now I called it the real trout challenge because they, they changed it from steelhead only to any trout. Uh, so we, we ended up lake trout fishing, but I won't ruin any more of the video. So you can go ahead and watch it, but all right, well, we got a bunch of people on here, so we'll get started. Basically, what I wanted to do is I'm going to do this weekly now on Monday nights. I decided to move it from Sunday to Monday because I, a lot of times on the weekends, I got things going on with kids and, and yada, yada, yada. So um, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Central, and we'll be a lot more timely going forward. We're going to do this YouTube thing live. And really what I want to do is I want it to be informative in the sense of I'm going to talk a little bit about how fishing was last week, kind of what I'm expecting to see this week. But really what I'd like to do is I'd like to get you guys involved. That's what I want to do. I want to get you guys chatting down below in the chat um, and asking questions. I'll let you know when I'm ready for those. Maybe tell me, you know, if you have some questions about fishing from last week, you got some questions about fishing coming up this week um, or anything you know specifically but that's really what i'd like to get going i'd like to give you a little info from what i've seen and what i expect to come and then uh um you know have you guys interact on the chat i also probably drop some some new product stuff and things like that that's going on as well um this time of year we do a lot of testing um and, and do things like that so if there's cool things i can show you guys and i'm not necessarily showing everybody um that'll definitely be something where i would do that here uh, that's exciting. So maybe I'll start that off. Uh, one of the things I'm excited about that I, I'm going to start playing with here this week and for the next few weeks is uh, test fly patterns for 2023. I can't believe I'm actually saying that. But yeah, test fly patterns for, for 2023. Um, and I believe that, uh, you know, it's really important to me at Salmon Candy that everything that we put out, we test and make sure that we're very confident in it before we put it out on the market. And I'm real proud of the fact that I don't think uh, at Salmon Candy we put out a lot of product that that isn't a plus great fish catching stuff. And that that happens because we put a lot of time and effort into testing it. 
Um, not everything is a Megatron or a G green jeans or a kryptonite, but um, a lot of it is really, really good stuff. So over the course of the next couple of months, we're going to be testing new flashers. We're going to be testing new flies, testing new spoons. Um, but one of the flies that I'm going to start playing with over the next couple of weeks is, is this pattern here. I'll try to show it to you guys here. Yeah, you can see it there. So what I'm going with here is I'm trying to find, and I'm letting some secrets out. I'm trying to find a kryptonite. I'm sorry a Cryptotron pattern. Um, and I've been playing a little bit with some different uh, colors and patterns. Um, and this is what I've come up with so far uh, that I've gotten out in testing to, uh, I would say about five or six of our, our key guys um, to to work on that. Um, and this is, this is what I'm sort of looking at so far to Cryptotron. We'll do some testing of it, like I said, and then... Um, you know, if it's a home run, we'll come out with it. If we need to make some adjustments to it in the material, we'll do that. Uh, if it's a total bust, we won't. But generally speaking, with flies, I like to try to come out with about two new colors a year. Um, that's what we did this year. So this potentially could be one of them. It's got a little bit of yellow. It's got um, UV. And it's got a little bit of uh, of pearls. So um, should be a really potentially good color. Uh, Beehive Fishing, I see you asked if I got something close to pickled sunshine. We do. Uh, it's actually our new color for this year, which would be Glow Green Goblin. That would be our, our closest to Pickled Sunshine. So, But what I was going to say about this particular fly, um, I'm trying to find some different stuff, right? So if you look at everybody's lineups, um, except for maybe like Atomic, who's over in New York, he's got a really nice spread of stuff. Um, if you look at a lot of the companies uh, who are Lake Michigan especially, um, there's a lot of blues and a lot of greens and that's okay because both blue and green flies work really, really well. Aqua, you know, boy, uh, excuse me, uh, powder blues, um, aquas, uh, light greens, dark greens, but we could use to round out our lineup a little bit. I think a few other colors and yellow was something that I thought, you know, chartreuse or yellow, whatever you want to call it was something that I thought maybe we're missing in the lineup. So, uh, you know, be interesting to see, um, you know, if this is something that ends up working or not, uh, see what I can. I'm looking forward to getting to test this a little bit and see if this is something that we want to come out uh, for you guys next year. A lot of you guys out there having success, I'm assuming, on flashers and flies already. We, you know, we've been seeing quite a bit of fish. Uh, you know, Green Jeans has been hot as I've been posting, Chrome Stud, Cryptotron, Megatron, Kryptonite, um, Blue Stud. I'm seeing a lot of um, a lot of those being posted with a pretty good mixture of flies. Um, seems like Illumination and Novocaine are probably two of the early favorites, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, but I am seeing, you know, quite a bit of Mercy, UV, a fair amount of No Mercy already um you know quite a bit a bunch of those colors so that's pretty good um let's talk about fishing last week a little bit uh we we here in sheboygan fishing was fairly tough up until last weekend it was really good uh in milwaukee and it was really good in um uh port washington and then we got that heavy, what it was, a day or two of south blows last week, and that seemed to slow down Milwaukee and Port a little bit and get Sheboygan really fired up. So over the weekend, Sheboygan saw fantastic fishing uh, in anywhere. It started in about 150 to 200, and by today, the boats were in 200 to 300. It seems like the fish are pushing out. Uh, something I talk about a lot in my salmon schools is I talk about looking at the surface temp map. And if you look at the surface temp map, matter of fact, I'll maybe show you here. Uh, my buddy Scott, and I mentioned Scott a lot. Scott Francois owns um, Rocks and Reels we fish together. And he sent me this today. If I get it to, uh, it's not looking like it wants to, it's weird. There we go. I wanted to get it to zoom in. That is a surface map, a surface temp map. And you can see the real light blues or I'm sorry, dark blues along the shore here is actually really, really cold water. Um, and this is warmer water out here. 
So what that's showing you is that right up against the Wisconsin shoreline, all the way from Sturgeon Bay down past what looks like Milwaukee and Racine, there's cooler water pushed up against the shore and the water warmer is actually pushed out um, into the lake. So that's why we're seeing these fish sliding east as they're coming up and down the shoreline. Um, interestingly enough, that's not always the case. Uh, a lot of boats were out this weekend, like I said, at Sheboygan and did good early in the week end, kind of Friday, early Saturday, 150 to 200. And then by the end of the weekend, it was like 250, 300, maybe even 350. What's interesting is it's not just coals they're seeing that. They're catching kings out there. They're catching lakers out there, the occasional steelhead. But the real surprise one is the kings because uh, generally speaking, this time of year, the king bite is, is 70 to 120. Um, that's very normal this time of year. That's where we look for them at. And that's not where they are right now. Now, I will say that can change by the day. Uh, there is some prediction tonight and I'm looking out the window and it looks like the wind is starting to blow already. There's some prediction tonight of some north, northeast winds. Um, and, uh, you know, that's uh, that has the potential to blow some of that warmer water back into the shoreline. Scott might get this map to me tomorrow and he might say, hey, Russell, take a look. You know, we got green and yellow all along the shoreline here, um, which is is what we're looking for. Nick just posted 50 degree on top beyond 300 foot, spent the day chasing temps. Exactly. So that 50 degrees is what we're looking for. It'd be nice if they'd suck that, if that got sucked into 80 to 100 foot of water because it would likely push a bunch of fish in with it. Um, you know, I don't mind going out in that deeper water. It's just I don't think the fish group up as tight as they do uh, when they're in uh, a lot closer to shore. So it makes it so that they spread out. And generally speaking, um, we don't have as much success on bigger numbers of catches then. Uh, so uh, Port and Milwaukee had kind of slowed up going into the weekend. Sheboygan had kind of really picked up. Now it looks like today, which is only Monday, um, Sheboygan's still pretty good. Um, but both Port and Milwaukee have picked back up. That's a really good sign. What that's telling me is there's more fish coming from the south, working their way north um, and filtering back in. Uh, you know, to fill in the void for the ones that have moved north. So there's more to come. Uh, sounded like Port was pretty good today north of Port. Sounded like Milwaukee was pretty good straight out north of Milwaukee. I see even Racine is good yet. So, um, I, you know, I think we have the potential chance here to see really good silverfish fishing for the next few weeks, um, especially if the cohos continue to hang around, which I think they probably will. Uh, that's that's the good news. Now, um one thing I want to talk about with cohos, because cohos are a lot of fun to catch. We don't always get them, um, you know, uh, all the way up to Sheboygan, and we don't always get them as good as we've had them this year. This year has been what I would consider a fantastic coho fishing year, all the way from, you know, Chicago, Illinois, all the way up to now Sheboygan. Um, but what's interesting is they're very large in size in comparison to normal. These cohos that we're catching right now are coho are the size of the cohos we'd normally catch in August. Um, and we've been catching them for a couple of weeks like that. What does that mean? It means we're using a little bit bigger gear this early than we normally do. I'm not saying you can't catch them on the standard double O uh, Dodgers uh, or the custom double O's from Salmon Candy, because you can. And I'm not saying you can't catch them on peanut flies, because um, you can. But where you saw them already a couple of weeks ago transition into what I usually see in in the month of june which is we start to use more of the stubby dodgers the the bigger and wider one and really what's been hot for like me and uh matt clinton when i've been fishing with matt on the skeeter and we've done some videoing has been salmon candy slider flies um and there's a there's a salmon candy slider fly here um what is the difference well a peanut fly first of all is tied on a treble hook everybody probably knows that um, if you don't, you can look on the Salmon Candy website, see what a peanut fly is. I don't think I have one on my desk here. I should have grabbed one. Let me take a look here. Don't think so. Um, nope, I do not see one. I don't think I have one on my desk. I apologize for that. But um, also what's important about, um, about that peanut fly is it's tied directly on a treble hook. Um, so it's, it's got a much smaller profile, only being about two inches, and it's tied on a treble hook. Um, what, is, what is interesting about this particular fly, the slider fly slides up and down the line just like a regular um, fly, but it's also three inches. So it's what I call the middleman. 
Um, a lot of times in, in life, you don't want to be the middleman, but in this case, it's okay to be the middleman. So you have your two inch peanut fly um, that's tied on a treble hook that we generally use early season, March and April already, and early May for cohos. Um, it can be deadly all the way into June, depending on the size of the coho and, and the particular year. But this particular year, since they were so big, we're seeing, you know, slider flies to three inches really, really get hot. And um, thank, thanks to a lot of our uh, employees at Salmon Candy, uh, we've got a huge run of slider flies about ready to hit the website, a bunch of colors. Um, like this is Green Willie here. Let's see what we got here. We got Green Willie. Some colors that are coming on, I think, pretty quickly. Hulk UV, which I think is a really good coho color. Ron Bro's Mistress. Ron Bro's Ex Mistress. Vanilla Ice. You know, so we got a bunch of those colors um, coming on the Salmon Candy website here pretty quickly. Um, they're getting getting shipped to the warehouse, um, I think this week. So hopefully those things hit there. And I think, like I said, we're, we're likely to see that uh, um, this coho bite to last a little bit longer. Um, and I think that the bigger profiled stuff has been good because the other thing we're seeing is we're seeing the coho fishing start to um, start to expand the depth. So a couple of weeks ago when I started fishing with Matt, it was almost exclusively high boards. He calls them high birds. Um, basically meaning like, you know, small sinkers out 25 to 35 feet, top 10 foot of the water column. And then we were using like slide divers out 20 to 30 feet, again, top 10, 15 feet of the water column. Now what we're seeing is we're still catching some on those rods, but we're catching them on three colors, five colors, even 200 weighted steels or coppers. Um, heard this morning, some guys are getting them on downriggers down like 25 to 35 foot. Um, so really, really good, but it's starting to expand. And that's when I really like to use that bigger stuff. Um, another month from now, when there's still some cohos around, we'll actually be using the standard four inch salmon flies and eight inch flashers, uh, the normal king flashers and catching a lot of cohos on those. You can catch them on them now. We have been, you know, for a couple of weeks already. It's not that they won't eat them. I still think the little bit smaller profile stuff like the stubby dodgers and the, and the, um, uh slider flies work a little bit better uh right now but um we are getting to that point where probably by the end of this month eight inch flashers and, and four inch flies you know might even work better than the uh stubby dodgers and uh, slider flies so the slider flies and the stubby dodgers probably got another few weeks to a month where that's going to be the, the the game in town and then uh, after that, it's probably going to transition into almost exclusively the eight inch stuff, maybe some Magnum spoons and stuff like that. Um, if you guys have been out a little bit and had some success on some cohos, maybe post in the uh, chat there what's been working for you for cohos. So some of the other guys um, see see what's been working for you. Um, yeah, I see early bird adventures. By the way, thank you for the post. Uh, Early Bird is one of our, our great Salmon Candy customers. He's also a member of the Salmon Candy's Junkies page on Facebook. He had contacted me looking to make a trip down here to go fishing. He's from Lake Superior area. He came down, went to Milwaukee, and just crushed him last weekend. So I was really happy to see that for him. Uh, he's been doing really, really well on 8-inch flashers already um, on these, you know, on these cohos. So that's awesome for him. Just read back a little bit in the chat. Uh, Patrick says he doesn't have a team for next weekend. Well, I think there's some guys looking for some fisher fishermen or there's some fishermen looking for boats, Patrick. So maybe shoot me a Facebook message. I know one or two guys in particular that are, uh, that are looking for a boat to get on. I could set you up with some, with some buddies. Um, Patrick also says Megatron with UV mercy, uh, took four big cohos down 19 to 21 feet on Saturday in Milwaukee. That's awesome. Um, Joel asked me, do cohos stay up high in the water column most of the year? Some do, Joel. Some suck down already. Like I said, there's guys catching cohos 30, 40, 50, 60 down, and it, it's not uncommon to catch them 100 or 120 down uh, as the water continues to warm. So um, Noah says salmon fishing has been, you know, super hot in Georgian Bay. That's awesome. Best fishing you've seen in years. Yeah, I think it's been a pretty epic year overall. 
Uh, Lake Ontario fishing has been good. For those of you who follow me saw that I had some fantastic fishing in Wilson, New York with my buddy Casey Briscoe. We won the 5K or the 1K a day, excuse me. Um, uh, the, the overall, we also won two days of the 1K a day. Um, Lake Michigan, I think, has been really, really good. The Michigan side has seen some great king fishing already this early in the year. The Wisconsin side has seen some great coho fishing. There's been enough kings around um, here in Wisconsin already for this early. You know, I've caught a fair a fair number of them um, in comparison to the last uh, couple of years. I mean, I would consider it average or a little better than average. So I think it's been pretty good. Um Speedy says, I have been having a horrible year. Best day was in port two weeks ago, and my best day was five for seven. All speedy, I guess what I would say is maybe shoot me a Facebook message. Let's talk a little bit when I get a chance on, you know, kind of what you've been doing and what hasn't been working for you, and maybe we can put together some stuff that has. Uh, looks like Early Bird um, is uh, sharing some of his stuff, um, which is great. Appreciate that. Nick says, uh, He's ditching his coho stuff and getting all eight inch flashers ready. Nick is fishing the Sheboygan salmon cup this weekend. So I agree, Nick, I'll probably be focusing on Kings and, and I'll take what I can get. John says, what is your opinion on using an S clip and loop on a dipsy to mimic a slide diver? I've been asked that a lot. And um, I personally don't like the idea, John, only because the guy that's promoted that a lot is no fish, Nick. And I don't know Nick personally. I saw him at the tournament this weekend. That's one of the few times I've ever actually even seen the gentleman. Um, but I watch, I'm a connoisseur of fishing information. I, you know, that's kind of how I feel like I've gotten to the place where I have in life. Um, I watched probably all of his videos. And if you really pay attention, um, there's a fair amount of times in his videos where his S clip divers don't trip with a fish on it. And that's my concern. So when you set that thing up, um, the way he does to try to create that sort of uh, slide diver mimic, um, it doesn't have real solid tension on both ends. So my concern has always been, are you going to get a clean release uh, ready? Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that we uh, I'm not sure that you do. So me personally, I'd rather still use a, a regular slide diver. Um, Bill Keller, Bill Keller said eight inch flasher with meat rigs and standard size spoons have been working on the Michigan side. I did see your post bill on that UV super frog, uh, with the diabolical rig. Great job, Nick. Uh, those that don't know Nick Ackley, he's doc from docs custom. I call him doc. So if you ever hear me re refer to doc, that's who I'm talking about. He's trying to egg me on to show some of our new custom flashers. Uh, settle down, Nick. There'll be a time and a place for that, but it's not tonight. Um, we are going to do some of that kind of stuff on here though. That's one of the exciting things sort of different I'll do for those guys that do tune in. The other thing I'm going to start doing starting next week is I'm going to start doing some giveaways, um, on, on this particular thing as well. So tonight was a good test deal. Um, but I'm looking forward to this. This should be a lot of fun, um, each and every week. So, uh, Nick says he needs a turkey coffee refill. I, yeah, I, I do. Um, it's been a turkey coffee Mountain Dew kind of day, as Mondays always are, trying to get back into the swing of the week and getting things done. And it's going to be a real, you know, unique week for me. A couple of days of hard work in here, and then a couple of days of uh, a bunch of days of fishing as we got the salmon cup coming up. So um, Dennis says he went ten for ten on on quarter ounce inlines this weekend off of Waukegan. That's awesome. Great job. Matthew says he's new to Great Lakes fishing. Any tips for combating fleas? Do you find them in pockets or are they widespread? Fleas, when they come, Matthew, are normally widespread. Uh, my recommendations are wire line and thick mono. Um, in particular, you can use a, uh, you know, like a flea repellent mono, like uh, I believe Cortland has a flea flicker line and things like that. Um, wire does better than braid. Hopefully we don't have horrible fleas this year. The lake is pretty cold yet. They generally come with... Uh, with warm water. So hopefully we can keep that away at least for the bulk of the year. Um, Scott K asks, why is it that sometimes inline weights seem to be the only thing that work, but lead core doesn't have the same production during certain times of year. Scott, I think it's the same reason why pump handles work at certain times and, um, and uh, lead cores or coppers 
don't or not as good. And then other times lead core or coppers work. So lead cores and coppers are going to be much more subtle, much more stealthy. You know, they're going to move around kind of slowly in the water column where inline sinkers, pump handles, they're much more aggressive program. That's why I think inline sinkers work so well for cohos. Pump handles work so well for aggressive king bites. Um, they're going to move up and down a lot in the waves. Every time you turn, they're going to drop like a rocket. Every time you pick up the speed, they're going to raise real quickly. They're a lot more of an aggressive program. So I think, uh, in my opinion, the inline type stuff works when the bite is on. And when it's a little bit off, or a little bit tougher, the more long line stuff is better. Um, Lake Pound says, love the videos. Just need the time to get out and work on the weather cooperate. Yeah, that's for all of us, buddy. Um, I've been able to get a little bit more this year than I have in years past because of the uh, you know, cause of not having the store anymore. And I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. As I said, I just put out a new one, uh, documenting the real steel challenge as I call it the any trout challenge. Um, great tournament put on by John Pollock from real impression charters up at Surgeon Bay had a blast with, uh, my buddy Scott from rocks and reels and a couple of friends, his brother and a friend. And we've got a big year of tournament fishing coming and we're going to bring as much of it as possible, if not maybe even all of it to you in some capacity, um, you know, from the rocks and reels We're we're doing salmon cup this weekend out of Sheboygan. Um, we're doing uh, the blue door out of Kiwani at the end of the month. We're doing Ludington tournament trail event in July. We're doing Manistee in August and we're doing, uh, um, Frankfurt in August. And if I'm still married in, in the end of August, it'll be close to 19 or 20 years, whatever that'll be. So, um, we'll see if we can manage all of that. So, uh, Brent and Melissa said, been catching Kings in Port Washington on Magnum spoons down hundred, 120 feet. Yep. That it sounds like there are some fish down deeper. That's great. Doug Frangin says he runs all S clips on dipsies with 17 foot lead. It was a game changer. Good. Glad to hear that that works for you. Doug, Doug's a good fisherman. So, um, I believe that Cryptotron for Todd's been working. No mercy. Great. Um, a lot of you guys are starting to post what's working for you. I really, really appreciate that. That's good. Uh, it's been a good, um, been a good year so far. So I'm glad everybody's, you know, posting that they're having some, some luck. A couple of you say you missed the store. I do too. There's definitely, um, you know, there's definitely parts of it. I do miss, but, uh, I think I can do better service to the industry um, and to um, the fishermen uh, by still offering our great products online, but yet being able to get out in the water more and uh, and offer you guys more intel and inf info on the uh, on the water with the videos. So let's talk a little bit about what's coming up this week. Um, so this week, like I said, is going to be the Sheboygan Salmon Cup. It's a tournament out of Sheboygan. Should be a ton of fun. Uh, that starts Friday with the ladies and kids and then runs through the weekend, Saturday and Sunday with the main tournament. What do I expect with the fishing? Well, if this wind, now it doesn't look like the wind's blowing at all. So I, I don't know. If the wind blows a little bit out of the north, northeast and kind of can shove that water back in, I think it's got the potential chance to light up big time, um, you know, here in Sheboygan. I think the fishing's going to be okay, no matter what, maybe even good. Um, because when, when you get, whenever you get 50, 60, 70, 80, well, it'd be more than that, probably a hundred boats out this weekend, somebody will find them. Uh, I think we're closing in on 50 boats signed up for the tournament already. So, you know, those 50 will be around looking for, for fish. Um, plus there'll be other charter boats and weekend anglers out looking for fish. Um, somebody will find them. And when they do, others will, you know, adapt and obviously get on those fish, um, and have good luck, uh, you know, once they're able to to get on them and get on the bite. So I do think fishing overall will be good this week here in Sheboygan. Uh, it, like I said, it sounds like it's still pretty good in port, still pretty good in Milwaukee, all the way down to Racine and Kenosha. I also think that um, it'll get good in Two Rivers, Manitowoc, uh, Kiwani coming up here. I think that, you know, it's real, it's, it's, it's real, it's got a high potential of, of that happening as well. Um, We'll see if, if, if I'm right on that, but I think by this weekend, it may get pretty good, um, you know, up in Two Rivers and Manitowoc, uh, as I think these fish are going to continue to to slide north uh, as we go along. So be interesting to see how that all pans out, but that's that's my prediction for this week. I think the flash or fly bite is going to be really, really good this week. I think some guys are going to have some good luck with, with Magnum Spoons. Um, have not heard a lot of meat so far. I'm sure there would be guys trying it. Um, but I think it'll be primarily a flasher fly bite 
Uh, it's interesting that we're seeing as much su success on chrome and greens as we are already this year, but some of the main standbys are still producing uh, like Blue Stud, uh, Megatron, um, you know, some of those real key colors. Uh, Blue Jeans are doing well. Um, shout out to the guys that fished the uh, grab bag or bait bag, excuse me, tournament in Port Washington last weekend that the Port Page put on. That looked like it was a ton of fun. Uh, we did donate a Blue Jeans flasher, Salmon Candy flasher, and a Mercy UV fly for that. And those guys looked like they had a great time and caught a bunch of fish, and they caught them on, on a whole bunch of stuff. It was nice to see everybody caught caught some fish and caught them on different products um, that were donated by some great companies. So, um, But it did look like a lot of blue, a lot of chrome and blue was was working, um, which is generally the case this, this early in the year. So um, it should be good. Hopefully things continue to sort of pattern and develop uh, as we go along here. But I know there's a lot of people from out of town that are you know, starting to come in and, and get ready for the season as they they make trips in June, July, and August um, to get ready to rock and roll. So any questions um, that you guys may have that you uh, you would like me to touch on or, or any specific topics um, that you think would be good? We talked a little bit about uh, those um, slider flies. We talked a little bit about the um, some of the new stuff we're going to be testing and trying. I'm going to show you guys some of that um, over the course of time here in the next few weeks. I'm also going to maybe try to bring a few um, special guests on. So maybe I can get my dad if he's done one day early. Um, maybe I can get him on here. Maybe get Jackson or Ron Bro or one of them guys on too. That'd be a lot of fun. So, um, Josh Walsh says the SRM divers pound, no issues releasing. Okay. He's talking about that, that stealth diver deal. Good. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not really familiar with that. I probably should get familiar. Um, I guess I've always used, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've always used uh, slide divers where I felt I needed the, the long leads. So um don't have a ton of experience. Um, Doug Franzen says, Russell, how do you feel about braid on riggers versus steel? Doug, I actually used braid in, in New York for the first time in a volume. And uh, I did, I did real, you know, real, we did real well with it. Obviously we caught a lot of fish, but I, I did like it. I didn't think there was any negatives to it. That's for sure. Um, I think it'd probably be easier uh, if you got to cut it and it's probably easier to deal with. Um, so uh, and I know that the blowback is way better. So I may try it on our center downrigger this year on the charter boat just to see, um, you know, see what we can do, uh, see how it is and, and test it a little bit. I got a few things like that I'm going to test this year and see see what's going on. So um, let's see here. Ryan Klein says, anyone ever you run a paddle spoon combo? Ryan, I've ran a bunch of that. Um, and uh, I have not had a lot of luck with that. Um, Ryan Pacute, I don't know how to say his last name. I apologize, Ryan. Starting lineup this weekend. Are you asking what mine's going to be? Is that what your question is? Um, I guess I'll give you that answer if I know that that's actually what you're looking for. Uh, Doc, Nick Acme says I'd come on live, but I can't stop painting. Perhaps we'll just have to do it here. Just a heads up to bring your own respirator. Uh, yeah. So doc, we can do that. Let's actually plan on that. Um, I'll come over to the shop. Um, the paint facility will do a live from the paint room, uh, and we'll paint up a couple custom, uh, salmon candy spoons and flashers live. So let's plan on that in a couple of weeks. I'll let you guys know when we do it, but we'll do the live, uh, from docs custom paint facility here in a couple of weeks. Um, Nick says captain's round table. I agree. Um, I don't know if I quite fit in with those guys. They're pretty pretty snooty compared to me. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, no, maybe we'll have to get Jackson, Sam Wagner, my dad, some of those guys, Dumper Dan, maybe we'll get them all. Maybe we can go down. Maybe I'll do a live from Dumper Dan's shop. We'll get all those guys in there and see what we can do. Um, Thomas really says you should try to get no fish Nick on. He would be a great resource. Yeah, I could talk to him again. I don't have a relationship with him or don't know him that well, um, but I'd be happy to try to get that to, to happen. Uh, Greg says, Russell, how do you feel about the generic Sam's releases for boards? Uh, brought some and noticed that they weren't rubber where you wrapped the line. Lines seem to slip. I would agree, Greg. I, I don't have a ton of experience with those as well, but it's a little bit I've talked to guys that have bought the generic 
Sam's Pro releases, they have told me that they don't think the quality is as good. Um, I use all the original ones and, and help develop that whole thing. So um, I know it works. I'm kind of a, if it ain't broken, don't fix it kind of guy. Uh, Ryan says, yes. Uh, all right, Ryan, I'm going to give you what I predict as my, my starting lineup. I don't know this, but I've won the Salmon Cup, I think, in seven or eight out of 12 years. Um, my program is generally pretty much the same, and I'm not afraid to tell anybody. Matter of fact, I've always said this, and I stick to this. I'd prefer if we drew about a three-mile square, and everybody fishes in that three-mile square, and we all get the same baits, and then we can find out who the best fisherman is. That'd be the way I'd prefer most of the tournaments to be. But if I had to guess, generally speaking, my setup is going to be we're going to probably run six pump handles, two divers, and a rigger, or five pump handles and four divers, or five pump handles, three divers, and a rigger. And I would say almost for certain you can pretty much guarantee it'll be seven to nine flashers and flies with potentially one or two meat rigs in there. That's probably what it's going to be. And it will be almost for certain mostly my staples. Green jeans, blue stud, chrome stud, mountain dew stud, megatron, kryptonite, cryptotron, potentially a version of two-face, um, UV dragon, maybe chrome icon, um, you can pretty much take that batch of about 15 flashers that I just told you and pick nine of them out of there and hook them on my rods. And that's likely what I'm going to do. So that'll probably be the program. I can't speak hundred percent for that because my brother-in-law Bubba, uh, he, he's, he's, uh, he's the co-boss on the back deck this weekend. He has a couple of particular things he likes to run. Generally speaking, he puts on what I tell him is hot, but then once something isn't going, he likes to switch stuff up. So he may come up, he may come up from down below in the cabin and have some hot idea and it might turn out to be the real deal. But generally speaking for me, Blue Stud, Megatron, Cryptotron, Cryptotron uh, Kryptonite, and Green Jeans, and Chrome Stud. You can pretty much bet that those five will be, those five or six will be on the rods. And that if, we're, if we get them, that's what they're biting. Uh, let's see here. Has anyone else tried Castaway Magnetic Divers? I have not tried those. Um, if you, Speedy says, if you had to choose between slide divers and dipsy divers for the rest of your life, what would you choose? I use slide divers for my shallow divers and with 50 pound and then 65 pound on mag. Speedy, I would agree with you. That's kind of how I do it. I like slide divers and shallow um, regular divers out deep. I guess if I had one or the other, I'd probably only use regular divers um for the magnum version but uh slide divers are definitely a absolute major part um you know major part of my program especially in shallow water and in around the harbor area um scott says been using the size three 70 pound barbarian swivels for both spoons and flashers instead of switching between fours and twos any thoughts if it's working for you scott again if it's not broke don't fix it i like it um it works for you great Chris says he's the Bubba on the tournament day. Yeah. Um, listen, uh, Bubba, my brother-in-law, we were talking about this the other day. He's, he's, he's about as good as it gets as a, uh, as a hand on a boat. Um, him and I have won and, and had a lot of success together. I've been blessed. I've had a lot of success in tournament fishing in my life. I've had a lot of success with a lot of got a lot of great guys, um, and gals. Um, Lily will be on board as she always is. Lily actually has a charter tomorrow morning. She's starting to charter for Dumper Dan. So I, of course, won't uh, won't probably uh, get get her on board as much anymore as she's getting pretty big time for dad now. She's got to go show her skills. Um, but, you know, I've had a great opportunity to fish with guys like um, my cousin Dave Van Akron, who I think is a fantastic fisherman, my cousin Pete Van Akron, Bubba, uh, Matt Thayer, John Hem, uh, Bill Bumgart, Mike Toon, um, you know, a uh, kid that I helped raise, uh, that I love with all my heart, Sam Seafelt, you know, absolute fishing machine he is. Um, him and I have had a ton of success together. Josh Fick, um, Nick Romer, um, you know, so I've fished with a lot of really, really good fishermen and, and all of those guys, um, 
you know, did a great job of knowing what their part of the team was. And, and that's why we've had success over the years. Now it's kind of new. We're back to sort of a new team. I'm fishing with my buddy, Scott. We're going to have sort of a plethora of, of different individuals coming in and out. But um, the key deal there with Scott and I is it's, it's pretty simple. Scott's the guy on the wheel. I'm the guy on the back deck and the interchangeable parts that come in and out will fill the, fill the holes as you'll probably see some of that. If you watch um, the video I just posted uh, you know, today from the, the real steel challenge. So um, Craig says a lot of illumination, Craig, don't be giving all my secrets away, but no, you're right. The illumination was actually born um, in the 2014 Sheboygan Salmon Cup victory. Uh, that fly is absolutely dynamite all year round, but it's really good early and it's a go-to for a lot of guys. And so far this year, it's pretty much been Novocaine or um, uh, Illumination for me. Uh, normally I do really well on Mercy this, you know, this early and a lot of guys are. I haven't had quite the luck I normally do early on it, but it's been crazy good on Novocaine and Illumination. So Joel says you talked earlier about water temperature. Is there a surface temperature to look for? Unfortunately, I do not own a fish hawk. Joel, I would say you look for warm water early in the year, cool water later in the year. That's the key. There's never one certain type of temperature you're looking for. But like right now, the fish are relating to warmer water because there's a lot of cold water. Later in the year when there's a lot of warm water, the fish will be relating to cool water. So um, I agree with you, Bill. There's a lot of great information being passed around on here, not only from me, but in the chat as well. So that's good that you guys are doing that. I appreciate that. Uh, Jason says, starting depth and direction out of Port Toronto. Jason, I would say what I would do is I would start uh, slightly north out of Port, and I would set up in about 120 and make a northeast troll, maybe all the way out to 300. And then sort of if you start to get a few bites in a certain depth, go ahead and plane out for a while in that depth, trolling north and south. If that dies, don't be afraid to go east and west a little bit again uh, until you get fish. I love that southeast or northeast um, troll right away in the morning and sort of let the fish tell you where they're set up and where they're going to be active for that day. I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of setting up inside of where you think the fish are going to be. So if I think the fish are going to be potentially in 120, I like to set up in like 80 or 90. So I have all my rods in by 120 and I would take like to take a northeast or a southeast heading. And then if I start getting bites in 120 or 130, then I'll plane off and go north and south. Um, let's see here. Chris says, where's the best place to get your meat for meat rigs? That's been tough. I, I know that um, Lake Michigan Anglers got meat. I think a lot of the stores up and down the shoreline in Sheboygan, uh, I think that Chris's Fish and Tech, a uh, former employee of mine, Hoodie, I think he might have uh, he might have some meat. I'm not positive on that. You could check with him. Um, the wharf sometimes carries it, uh, so there are some places where you can get it. Beehive Fishing says leader links on your divers. Um, when I use mag divers or regular divers, I like 17 feet. So um, let's see here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Nick says cough. I may run an SGH. Nick, that is one I forgot about. You are right. SGH has been one of my Go to June and July. Well, again, that's actually a good year round flasher, season round flasher, because it's a great, um, it's a great uh, multi species flasher. But SGH is just a great blade all around. It's not used enough um, and it's not, uh, it doesn't get the uh, respect that it deserves. It's a great king flasher. I, I know a couple of salmon cups that was a good one for us. Um, and uh, it was real key in us having good success. Um, but it also works great in July and August for multi-species. So just a great one overall. Todd says, tell Lily good luck. It's been so cool watching her grow up on the videos. Yeah, she's she's awesome and she's a sweetheart. She'll continue to, to fish, I'm sure, plenty on there and you guys will see her. But, you know, she's starting to take that uh, role now as she wants to get into charter fishing and that. I just don't want it to become, you know, a job for her. I want it to be fun. You know, I did it growing up and, and did it hardcore every day my cousin and i i worked for dumper and my cousin worked for my dad and, um you know it was work at times and, and i'd like her to keep it as much fun as possible so um hopefully she can do that uh joe word says can you send the kings back to michigan we miss them joe did you lose them i guess i i, I saw you crushing them for a while there I, I guess i lost track a little bit it got a little tiring to be honest watching you post picture after picture after picture um, of Big Kings. No, I was actually really happy for you and saw you were having a lot of success on a bunch of stuff, including some of our stuff, and I'm glad you did. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Did, did they go away now? Um, 
to be honest, I think that uh, a lot of them are in the middle of the lake right now. Um, if Guy asked me right now where I would fish, if the tournament was tomorrow morning, it would probably be out deep, um, as I think a lot of the fish are, uh, um, you know, are probably out deep in that warm water and are going to get pushed around here in the next couple of days with a little bit of weather. Jeremiah Martin, don't be spilling the beans on that salmon corner. That's one that uh, we may have to revive at some point. That's a, a good one that a lot of guys don't know about. So, no, I'm teasing. That's That was a good flasher that I did years ago. We haven't we haven't done for a while. So, um you know, we'll see what uh, what comes here as we do a little bit of flasher testing. Um, Doc and I can show some of them off as we as we uh, get in the old paint room here. Um, we'll go live from there in a couple of weeks. Should be a lot of fun. Jamie asks, how far out of port is 300? Jamie, that's a good question. I'd say probably 10, 12 miles. Um, but I don't think you need to quite go to 300 to start catching fish. But 300 can be a good, uh, you know, maybe set up in like 180 and troll out. Um, and, and likely catch fish most of the way out would be my guess um, on, a, on any given day. So, um, you know, but yeah, I would say eight to 10 miles. Jamie, are you coming to Sheboygan or Port? I know I saw, I think I got a message from you. I haven't had a chance to respond to yet um, that said you were coming this way here in the next couple of days. So, or a weekend maybe. Um, I wasn't sure if you were coming to Port or Sheboygan. Uh, who's fishing the tournament this weekend? I know Nick is. Anybody else on here uh, fishing the Sheboygan Salmon Cup? Uh, post if you are, what the boat name maybe that you're fishing on is. And maybe a few of you should give me your starting lineup since since I spilled mine. What uh, What's going to be your hot go-to baits for the weekend? Um, I'm trying to think what else we maybe could go over here. Like I said, I think we got 48 boats signed up. I'm really excited about the uh, 1K a day. That should be a ton of fun. Um, Speedy says he is fishing this weekend on four reel. That's awesome. Good to hear that. Uh, Chris says he is not. Nick is fishing. Yep. On Doc's Customs. Yep. Scott asked if it's normal, uh, for there to be so few lake trout on this side this time of year. I think that, uh, the last few years of fantastic lake trout fishing, Scott, has taken its toll a little bit, and you're starting to see the numbers of lake trout decline slowly, um, you know, and then that's why we're seeing the lower numbers would be my guess. Patrick says he's going to get them on that mystery 10-inch flasher I made him. Yeah, I believe that. Um, thankfully, I got a picture of it, so I can make some more if we need to. Uh, Nick's fishing on the bone crusher. Um Coho, you don't. Cool. Um, Craig, have you been out at all? I know you were talking about maybe going tomorrow or something. Are you going to head out of port tomorrow or Sheboygan? I know you we were kind of talking about that. Anybody got any ideas? What, uh, what topics would you like me to talk about in the next upcoming weeks other than just kind of a current, you know, fishing report and what, what happened the week before? Um, you know, we'll get on a little bit of we can get on a little bit of topic of, uh, you know, specific, maybe more coal fishing, king fishing, um, you know, deep water, shallow water, plugs, whatever. Um, you know, we could we can definitely get a little more specific on a topic per week. N uh, Nick says, Patrick G. Marv's big fatty on a chrome blade or UV tape. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there was somebody that was asking me for that the other day that said that was one of their hot flashers. I don't remember who that was. Um, it's always interesting to see all the different colors that everybody loves. So um, looks like we're getting a lot of views on the new video. Let's see here. Okay, so we we're on the new Real Steel video. We had, let's see what we got. Yeah, it looks like we're already up to almost 200 views on that. So that's getting up there quite a bit. Jamie would like to see a live video of how to choose trolling direction to be with the current. Okay. Yeah, we can talk about that. Early bird wants to talk about mag divers versus mag slides. We can do that. Yeah, we can have a, we just, we'll just do a diver topic one week. I think that's a good plan. Good comment. So... Ryan's fishing the Charlevoix tournament this weekend, the trout tournament, I think that is, right? 
Yeah, gas prices are getting a little bit out of control. I would agree with that. Hopefully they can get that sort of reined in here pretty quickly. Um, overall, I think, excuse me, I talked a lot about that this weekend um, with the guys. And, you know, the overall aspect of, you know, the gas prices, they're high, um, you know, but I don't see a lot. So far, I haven't seen a lot of guys who really are diehard fishermen you know, you know, slow their fishing down because of it. Now, hopefully it doesn't continue to climb. Hopefully it, it's, it slows down here or stops or maybe even comes back a little bit. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Scott says he'd like to see a lake trout bouncing bottom video. We can do that. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Well, Scott, actually, to be honest with you, if you, um, if you haven't, you should watch the Real Steel Fishing Tournament video that I just put up because that's an entire – day of lake trout fishing. Now there isn't as much tutorial and how to on that because it's a tournament deal, but if you pay attention, you'll pick up a lot of stuff. Um, Beehive asks how important trolling bags are. I absolutely love trolling bags. We could talk about that. I'll talk about why um, I love trolling bags. Chris, when is that uh, Kenosha Coho Classic tournament? I've fished that before. I want to say that I thought that was always, always early June. Is that next weekend? Um, Jamie says, recommendations on when to haul boat down to Sheboygan for salmon with the family. Jamie, right now, generally speaking, mid-June is the time to come for, for kings. Uh, well, for salmon in general, kings, cohos, et cetera. So, um, well, we've been doing this for about 50 minutes. I think we'll start to wrap this up. As I said, we're going to do this live weekly now um, on Monday nights. I, I think I got this thing figured out now, so we shouldn't have this issue anymore. I'll schedule it for Monday nights. We're going to bring some other people on board, um, you know, from week to week. Maybe I'll even announce that ahead of time if we're going to have a special guest, if we can get guys like my dad or some of the dumper guys or, um, you know, somebody asked for No Fish Nick. Uh, we're definitely maybe next Monday or the Monday after. Um, we're going to uh, for surely get um, – in the Doc's custom paint shop, and we'll do a live one from there. The only thing I can't promise about that is there usually tends to be potential beer drinking and things going on in there after hours as well. So um, we got to be a little careful, I guess. I don't know what the rules on YouTube and beer drinking and stuff is. But, uh, yeah, bring on the Brickle beatdown. I agree. That would be a ton of fun. Maybe we will have to get Jesse Brickle on the uh, on the Russell's uh, Fishing Tech uh youtube live um that should be good but uh <laughs> nick says that might get that might get us to osha yeah but we'll uh we might have to keep the beer drinking nick uh on a, on a minimum and be strictly business that night we'll have to see but looking forward to this new deal um like i said next week we'll do some giveaways um as well uh and we'll talk fishing and we'll continue to have some fun so look forward to coming up here in the next few weeks We'll have some more um, tip videos coming on. We'll have some fishing reports. I might even go tomorrow morning. Don't tell my wife that yet. I haven't talked to her about it. Um, I might try to get out tomorrow morning. If I do, I'll get a fishing report from Sheboygan or Port or both um, live on Facebook um, with more specifics. And then, uh, you know, you can probably expect Monday or Tuesday next week to see a um, salmon uh, cup video uh whether we do good or whether we do bad uh not a lot of guys are willing to put themselves out there like i am um but i'm willing to do it listen i mean if you fish tournaments as long as i have you know that some weekends you're gonna you're gonna be the uh the bug and some weekends you're gonna be the windshield so that's just the way it works uh but we're gonna get after it either way um and see what we can do so um look for that video and then we'll continue to you know, pump out as much as we can. I'll try to go live maybe even a few um, times this week uh, from the Rocks and Reels. Maybe give you guys some updates on how things are going for us because obviously the video itself won't come out till Monday. So if we get some things going, maybe I'll uh, I'll go live and, and, and show you guys what's going on. So appreciate everybody joining. It was a ton of fun. We'll look to see you again next Monday, 6 p.m. Central. We'll see if maybe we can get, uh, maybe we'll do the Doc's custom thing. Doc, you're on here now. Can we do next Monday? Is that good with you? Should we just plan on it now? We're going to go live from Doc's Customs Paint Shop next Monday. See what he says here. If he can hear me and if he answers. 
I don't want to. I don't want to commit to it before he says we're good. He says that should work. So okay, we'll plan on it. Soft plan right now, but soft plan as of right now will be uh, next Monday night, 6 p.m. Central. Russell's Fishing Tech Live coming at you. Hopefully from Doc's Custom Paint Shop. We'll give a few freebies away. Maybe show you a couple of things we're working on for 2023. And we're either going to be celebrating a really good finish in the Sheboygan Salmon Cup, or we're going to be trying to figure out why we uh, we were the bug and not the windshield. So good luck this week if you get out. Let me know if you need anything. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Russell, out.